All right, this is my 19th video, and I'm with Jenny Eggleston Kane. And um, I know her from, I guess, a little over a year and a half now. Um, I started working with her when I became the executive director for the North Idaho Centennial Trail Foundation and Instant Connection, and we have become really close friends. And I reached out to her last week, the end of last week, to do an interview. Her profession is. Um, so I'm going to let her kind of explain what she does and then um, just some questions about mental health. Thank you, Tabitha. Yes, my name is Jenny Kane, and I am um, a mental health therapist that also focuses on life coaching, mindfulness training, and business therapy. And I've been a therapist in the community nearly 20 years, and I love serving the Coeur community. It's my favorite job in the whole wide world. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So my training has led me to the study of psychology behind crisis and trauma. I've studied change and how resiliency towards change to be a major factor in determining our mental wellness. So with this pandemic, I would say as a collective, we're going through major change okay. <laughs> on that, all levels. And that was like my first question with that is like, um, what is this pandemic doing to our mental health and to people even that are not have any issues? Like what is this What is this doing to our mental health right now? Well, before we go into how the pandemic has affected us right now, I like to look at what was going on before the pandemic. Oh, of course. Yeah, our, our society as a whole has been struggling with addiction, anxiety, depression. The suicide rates have gone up. And then although we have incredible people, they're really working hard in our system. I know great therapists, great coaches, mentors, everybody's doing their part. However, because of our mental health system, it's kind of broken and people are, you know, don't get all the help that they need. So before the pandemic, our society is in a mental health crisis. And now we're about a month into the pandemic and everybody's gone through a process of grief. They're in their own little, in their place with it. However, I'm finding that the surveys recently are showing that 50% of our society has claimed that they struggle with mental health, varying degrees, you know, mild anxiety to severe anxiety. And that 20% on top of that 50 are saying that they are experiencing significant mental health issues. So right now we're looking at a society that's looking at 70% who's been affected by mental health. Yeah. I think that's staggering. Yeah. Yeah. And so after the pandemic, you know, we're going to have some collective trauma and I think it's going to linger and our mental health needs are going to be more, um, um, are going to be more. And in a system that's already broken, I think we're going to see some issues come up. People will need um, services they can't afford as well as being in long waiting lines, maybe upward to months before they get their help they need. Oh my so it's kind goodness. of significant. Yeah. yeah, and I wanted to put out one more statistic and that's NAMI, the National Mental Health um, uh, or, or Organization has said that $425 million of that two trillion from the Stimulus Act uh, is gonna go to mental health. To me, that's not enough, 425 million it's just a drop in the bucket, in my opinion, based on what's happening with the pandemic. And this, um, um, this economic study also has said that in 2018, the, they did a, the, the cost of, of what it was gonna be on the global economy, and this is before pandemic, is $16 trillion by 2030 is gonna cost our, our whole world mental health um, issues. Wow. That's, that's a huge, huge amount. I can't imagine what's going to be now after the pandemic, given that there's an increase in issues. Oh, completely. Yeah. So the pandemic is turning into a compounding issue. There's pre-existing mental health issues, coupled with trauma caused by isolation, loneliness, fear of the virus, fear of giving it to other people, fear of our economy, fear of uncertainty, fear of all the information that comes to us. Oh, I completely, I'm yeah. probably struggling on relationships um, in families um, as well. Absolutely. And so, you know, on a global level, we're seeing an issue, but on a personal level, um, how this, how might this affect each and every one of us, especially in our, in our town, in our community, because if we know how it's affecting each other, we can reach out and help people more, you know, 
and every and every town is unique and special and they have their own set of of issues in which to grapple with yeah exactly yeah and so i i kind of break it down into two areas that is greatly affected during this pandemic one is our physical health so we we fear even getting the virus we fear that we might give it to somebody else um we've had to social distance leading to more isolation and loneliness. And, and this, you know, I'm finding it especially difficult for, for teens and, and older adults, you know, our grandparents' age, my parents' age, um, and, my, and the youth really struggle with the isolation bit. And I think it has something to do with their developmental areas and their life journey. You know, they want to connect with people. It's important. So social distancing is quite, quite difficult on our in our town um, substance abuse has gone up substance oh. use in general so that takes a toll on our physical health and decreased exercise overall because a lot of people go to the gyms or hang out with people for accountability and then the second piece is economic health um, there's been a um, huge loss of income for a lot of people uh, retirements accounts have have dropped considerably People are concerned about whether or not they're even going to have a job. Yeah. Um, so every every on every level, everybody is hit on the economic piece, including concerns over the global economy and and the overall distrust of leadership right now. So I wanted to kind of you know wrap those two up with what are the symptoms when our physical and economic health are 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 jeopardized, and one is uh, lowered immunity, increased depression and anxiety with panic attacks, some paranoia increased anger, irritability, frustration, and even suicidal ideation. And if you have a compounding pre-existing mental health issue, uh, the symptoms are exacerbated. And so extra help is needed at this time. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I know we're struggling big time. Um, it, and it makes a lot of sense, especially for the younger kids. I've been seeing, um, you know, just watching videos and, you know, all those kind of things and just seeing like, it's, it's tough. It's tough for them. Mm -hmm. But you know, I see two sides of, of the fence with, with people right now, and those are the ones who are overly committed. They're in it. They're in it to win it. They want to they wanna flatten that curve. They want it to go away. You know, I, I'm one of those people. <laughs> but then, you know, we have, we have people on the other side of the fence that, that don't necessarily, you know, think this is that big of a deal or... Um, not maybe even seeing the correlation between social isolation and the flattening of the curve. But when we flatten a curve, that means things are going to take longer to heal because we're not having that big rush of, of illness and then it goes away or it's, it's a slow and steady burn. And so people have to really be patient during the social isolation, but I know it can become quite difficult, and especially for the North Idaho folks. You know, civil liberties is, civil liberties is super important. Yeah, and like you said, we, I mean, especially in North Idaho, in the, where, where we live, it's already suicide rates are already so high. Um, my mom's a police officer, and she tells me about um, all of those things. And you and I've talked about this. We already have those high suicide rates and depression. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess a more positive thing I can ask is, so someone that's struggling with a lot of these things, mm -hmm. what do you recommend for them to do um, to help? Like, what can they do um, to help these things? Well, that's what's the cool thing about mental health is, you know, we can get so caught up in the symptomology because we don't like ourselves and the people we care about to suffer. But the really cool thing about mental health is we can all get better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether it's shifting our narratives, whether it's um, practicing mindfulness and being in the present moment, whether it's getting on medication, seeking out therapy, um, our coaches, so um, getting connected with others is, is, is highly important. The other, the other really great thing about mental health is there's a basic um, kind of a building block. One of them is good nutrition. I like to think of myself when I'm experiencing depression or anxiety as having the flu and no pun intended with the pandemic. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, but I, I, it's, it's important to eat really nutritionally and, and get um, a sleeping pattern, staying to our routines the best we can, and um, exercising, connecting. And, with, and when I say connecting, I really mean that seriously because loneliness, isolation has been known, and 
has been known to um, affect self-esteem and worth. So if people start to isolate, they start telling themselves that they're not likable or lovable. So Great. you can do anything to stay connected. And Gen, and Gen Zers have been really helpful. There's so many apps right now on connectivity. There's like a, I think it's called House, house Party. I love, it. I love House Party. Yeah, and 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 then people are are getting downloading apps in which they can um, embrace their creativity through art and music and sharing, and and so um, what what what's really cool about this time is that we have an opportunity, an opportunity to um, really go deep inside and heal ourselves on many levels, whether it be getting back to basic nutrition, whether it is figuring out new ways in which to connect with people or whether it is we pivot and turn and get creative about what's next. I, I personally think this is an exciting time, but it's not for everybody. I'm in a unique position in which I get to still contribute to society in a way that makes economic sense for me, but not everybody does. And so it's kind of important to maybe during this time reach out to community in our area to get the help that's needed. That's so true. Um, so we'll probably start wrapping this up, but how can people get a hold of you um, if they're wanting to seek your help or get guidance in some way? How can people uh, reach out to you and how can the community support you? Well, um, the community can, community can support me by supporting themselves and then taking care of the people they love and checking in on them. And, and, if, and, and if you're one of the people whose cup is is full already, give some away. And if people are thirsty, reach out to those who can. Um, to get a hold of me, I'd be a great resource to help people connect with um, life coaches, psychologists, counselors, you name it. I'm a great resource for that. I can lead people where they need to go. If they want to work specifically with me, of course, they can get a hold of me through www.wellnesstherapycda.com. My email is Jenny, J-E-N-N-I-E, at wellnesstherapycda.com. And then I have a Facebook account, Jenny, Jenny Kane, Counseling in, in Executive um, Consulting. Perfect. Well, thank you yeah. so much. This is, I hope this is, I hope everyone watches this video because this is a wealth of knowledge and it's something we need to all pay attention to right now. Well, I want to appreciate you and give thanks to you. Tabitha for, for giving me the opportunity to share my passion in mental health and, and to be able to hopefully give meaning to some people out there. Yes, perfect. Well, thank you thank so you. much.